welcome to my channel, Samantha's Bookshelf. Um, one thing that I've been worried about with starting making videos is that I wouldn't be able to get to the books that I want to read the most um, or that I just wouldn't really be reading very much at all because I'm trying to figure out how to make videos and how to edit and all that stuff. Um, even since I started kind of doing this, I've only finished two books so far in December, which is um, very low for me. So um, I want to read books that I'm really excited about and I want to actually read books. So I figure the best thing to do for that is to just go through my Goodreads, um, want to read shelf and pick like the three books that I want to read the most. Okay, I'm going to start by sorting this by number of pages because I want to read shorter books. My husband and my daughter and I are going to BC for three nights um, and it's three and a half hour drive there and back. So I figure if I pick some shorter books, um, I could probably finish one on the way there, one on the way back and one while we're there. Um, okay, so, okay, the first book that so this one is short and it's also one of the ones I want to read the most and that is Death Valley by Bo Melissa Broder. Um, this is not a super high rating, it has a 3.6, um, but it seems like it's that mix of contemporary and speculative and I absolutely love that. All I really am kind of gathering from this, I think it's about a woman who is grieving because her dad is sick and I think her husband is sick and so she kind of goes away and she ends up going inside this like giant cactus in the desert and that's honestly all I want to know. So I definitely want to read that one and I think it's only 240 pages so that would be conducive for what I want to do. And then, um, oh and then A Mind Spread Out on the Ground um, by Alicia Elliott. This is another one that I really want to read. Um, also I have this out on audiobook on my Libby app and I think it's only like seven hours um, and this would be perfect because I have to pack tonight and I could start listening to this while I pack. I could listen to it in the car and yeah that would be perfect. Yeah this one is um, an indigenous author. This is a memoir about intergenerational trauma, colonialism, oppression and I just I love memoirs that um, discuss those kind of things. So I think that one will be really good. Okay, let's see what is jumping out at me. No Exit, I feel like would be really a really quick read because it's a thriller, but kind of, I think I'm excited for other things and I kind of want to read that for something else that I have in mind. Um, erotic Stories for Pujambi Widows, I really want to read. Half a Soul. Slewfoot. I want to read Slewfoot so badly. That's probably one of the books on here that I want to read the most. But I like. I feel like I have not been able to find it. I can't find it in bookstores, so I doubt I'll find it. And also, it's like short, 307, 307 pages, but it's like wide. So I feel like it would take a long time to read. The Writing Retreat. That one will be another fast-paced one. Um, oh, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Um, this is probably in the top as well. Um, and it's 325 pages, but I feel like it's like smaller. Um, so I think it would be, you know, a nice light read, easy to get through, I think. Um, and this one I think is exactly what it sounds like. It's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. <laughs> I think she studies fairies and then she goes off, um, to make an encyclopedia. And I think she ends up having to travel with her like academic rival. So I think that one would be really fun as well. Okay, what else is on here? Oh, and then the shortest one, Mammoths at the Gate by Nevo, the fourth in the Singing Hill Cycle. This one I want to read as well really badly because I love the first three, um, The Empress of Salt and Fortune, When the Tiger Comes Down the Mountain, and Into the Riverlands. All books follow a cleric named Chi and they are traveling around, collecting stories, and it is a series, but I think you could probably read them out of order because um, they don't really follow, every story is kind of like its own thing. Um, and that one, yeah, that's a novella, so that would be perfect. I could probably finish that on one of the car rides, um, which is exactly what I am trying to do. Yes, 
so I'll let you know what I end up getting or if I end up reading something. Um, yeah, I'll see you then. Okay, bye. <laughs> I truly don't know why this keeps happening and I'm honestly getting really annoyed um, but I keep recording I did this yesterday so it's January 1st today um, I recorded some stuff yesterday and it like would constantly stop like start and stop recording um, and I don't I really don't know why I thought that it was because I had the like clamp of the tripod like too close to one of the side buttons and like the hotel is like older so it's like I don't know rickety like every time someone like um runs by it kind of like the floor shakes so I thought maybe it was moving it and like pressing the button um but I just recorded some stuff and I went to check if it was still recording and it wasn't so I I don't know I guess I'm just gonna get up after like everything I see and make sure it's still recording Okay, so like I said, yeah, it's January 1st. Um, I finished, we got here yesterday. I finished um, about 40% of a mind spread out on the ground while I was packing on the audiobook. And then I finished the rest in the car ride. We drove up yesterday. And then, yeah, we were just enjoying the hotel, going to the pools, doing all of that. There was some like deer outside my room, like right close. So that's always fun. But yeah, um, so I finished a mind spread out on the ground um, on the drive up and it was amazing. It was five stars. Um, it was narrated by the author, which is something I absolutely love. Um, she has a really good like narrative voice too. Like I think she should narrate other stuff. Like her voice was like very lovely. Um, and yeah, it was like the perfect mix. Uh, it was what I love in a memoir, like perfect mix of um, personal stories and but also with a lot of like social commentary and um, bigger discussions as well. Um, yeah, I'm trying to be fast because I honestly don't know when my phone is going to stop recording. Yeah, I talked a lot about um, her childhood, growing up in poverty, growing up with her mom having um, struggles with mental health, having bipolar disorder, being in and out of the hospital, growing up with a white mother but an indigenous father, being able to pass as white and like the mix of relief and guilt that she felt with that. Great discussions of colonialism and generational trauma as well and honestly I'm not doing any of these topics justice. It was just it was so beautiful. It's one of the best memoirs I feel like I've read and I definitely recommend it. Um, it talked about growing up with... Oh the fan stand. That's great. Let's turn that off. She talked a lot about too if like families are unable to provide their children with the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables they're seen as you know they're doing that as a choice and not because you know unhealthy foods are usually the cheapest and at least they're giving their children something to eat but yeah being seen as oh like you're not eating healthy like you're making that choice rather than no it's actually quite hard to get access to healthy food when you're growing up poor or in poverty because the unhealthiest foods are the cheapest and that is by design. Um, and she talked about that a lot. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. It's a book that I'm going to definitely buy um, and probably reread, add it to my list of rereads. Okay, moving on from that. So before we left, um, I did go to the bookstore and I picked up um, three things. So I got, um, I did end up getting, um, Madness at the Gate by Nevo. Um, I couldn't resist this one. It's so short. I figured this would just be very, um, quick to read on the car ride there or 
one of the evenings. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. Um, I'm going to have to pick up the first three and reread those ones as well. And then I got Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies um, by Heather Fawcett. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all of these while we're here. Probably read like this one on the drive home and then probably get through one um, while we're here and then, you know, but we'll see. <laughs> picked up Death Valley by Melissa Broder um, and this one I am 47 pages in um, it's only 240 pages so um, I think I'm like 20% of the way and yeah I'm actually really enjoying it so far what did I say about this one this is she is grieving and so she goes um, to Joshua Tree I think um, Death Valley uh, just to kind of get away and she's an author she's writing a book um, so she just kind of gets away to go through the desert and write her book and kind of escape um, her grief so her dad is um, in the ICU he had a motorcycle accident and he's been there for quite a while um, and her husband also has kind of a mysterious illness for the past nine years and so it's a lot of the narration style I'd describe it as like choppy which i know it kind of sounds like a bad thing but i'm actually really enjoying like how it's written um there's a lot of i wish i could find the part that i'm talking about like the sentences are really short and there's a lot of brackets like she'll it'll be like a short sentence and then like at the end like she'll put something in brackets like oh i haven't met this person bef before i know by her hair color and then in brackets purple and then oh he had um acne and then in brackets cystic <laughs> like um things like that but it, it's kind of making it um kind of fun it's reminding me of early morning riser and less and nothing to see here just like where kind of like serious things are happening in these people's lives but it's kind of like not taken super serious like the writing style makes it feel like it's not serious like it's just kind of light and I find that really enjoyable. So I'm curious how this is gonna go. I just got to the part where she like goes into the cactus. Um, Cause yeah, I think I mentioned it like in the synopsis, it's basically just, she goes to the desert to escape her grief and she finds a giant cactus in the desert that shouldn't be there. And it has a gash in it and she just goes into the cactus. So I just finished the part where she goes into the cactus. Yeah, I just, I have no clue what's gonna happen next, but um, I'm excited to keep reading. But yeah, that's what I have. Nice little book stack for four days in the mountains. So um, my husband um, has our daughter right now. They're just hanging out. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading um, and then probably hang out with my family later, go to the pools later. Um, but yeah, see you, you soon. You away with a hint of a smile as if I could read your Say words I thought for a while, but I couldn't conjure.
Okay, hopefully you can see me. I'm get a, getting kind of lazy with like, um, I just want to put the camera down and film. I don't want to like go back and forth and constantly check um, if I'm recording, if you can see me. So hopefully you can see the top of my head. Um, I got about another hundred and so pages um, read yesterday. So I'm got about, oh, where's my bookmark? Oh, I've got about 90 pages left. Um, yeah, and I'm still really enjoying it. I like the, um, I'm still enjoying like the choppy kind of way of writing. You're just like in this woman's head. I've just also realized it took me like this long to realize that she's not named. Like she doesn't have a name. She's talking about her dad and her husband a lot and they don't have names. Um, the only people that do have names or that we're told their names are the two people that work at the best western um but other than that um no one's names are said <laughs> yeah and you're just in this woman's head like the whole time she's like kind of funny she's like out in the desert like talking to rocks like just doing her own thing i definitely thought there was going to be more like in the cactus um she goes into the cactus and then yeah i thought it was going to be like kind of like a portal, like alternate universe kind of thing. Um, but no, she just goes into the cactus, hangs out in there for a little bit, um, and then leaves. <laughs> like something happens while she's in there that has her thinking like, oh, did I make this up? Am I hallucinating? It's going in a different direction now though that I'm still really enjoying and I'm curious to see where it goes. But yeah, I'm gonna keep reading this. I hope to finish this sometime today and then maybe start something new tonight. But yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy the pools and check in later. much much later so I finished Death Valley last night there and I started um, Mammoth at the Gate and then uh, my plan was that I would do a little update in the car um, and then I just never got around to it so then my plan was that I would do a little update we were going up to the mountains again um, like a couple days after to go skiing and I was like oh you know what I could use that as like a backdrop again because my brain thinks that like people care this much, but they don't. Um, so we went skiing today, and then as you can see, um, I uh, got ran into. I got like I collided with someone else, and I have a black eye and I'm very sore. So I just don't care anymore, and I'm just gonna do a little update now. And I just want to go have a bath <laughs> and have a nap. <laughs> so. I finished Death Valley and I really liked it. I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. I don't think I mentioned this when I was first updating you guys, but um, she's an author and so she goes to the desert because she's grieving her father and her husband and she's writing a book that's also set in the desert. And the plot of her book is that the husband is sick 
and they go to the desert to like reconcile and then something happens there's like an inciting incident and then like xyz happens and she realizes that she does really love her husband and that's the plot of the book that the character in this book is writing and so throughout the book she'll be like going doing her thing and think hmm, maybe i should make this the inciting incident maybe i should make this the inciting incident um and it's really interesting because like the plot of the book she's writing kind of mirrors what is happening in the actual book um and so for in the actual book the inciting incident for like everything that happens is the big giant cactus that she goes and hangs out inside of and it was it was i found this book really funny as well because let me put this down um, I found this book really funny as well because she'll talk about like she was walking in the desert and she goes pee and then it's like a triumphant pee and then like later other things are happening and she's going she goes pee again but it's like a sad pee and then she talks about how like no one is shown that they're peeing enough in novels like they eat and they drink but they don't pee <laughs> and then she also says or my editor tells me like P isn't a plot point. She's like, maybe I'll make the inciting incident something about P. Um, so it was I, really funny. Like I found myself like laughing and um, I've mentioned before that I'm not like very smart as well. Like when it comes to reading books, like sometimes there's like lots of things that I just don't pick up on. Um, and because the plot of the book that she's writing is very similar to the plot of the actual book, um, it kind of like holds your hand and like talks you through like, um, the, some of the things that are happening and like some of the thoughts and like the revelations. And, um, I feel like that's something that like some people wouldn't like, but I really liked it. Um, as well as the end, I enjoyed the ending. Like I, I feel like this book could have gone so many different ways and had like a really vague open ending. It had a conclusion, but at the same time it didn't. And I just, I really enjoyed how it ended. So that was four and a half stars. Um, good first book of the year. And then on our last night, I started Mammoth at the Gate. I was hoping to actually finish this one. My, I always think that I'm going to read way more than I actually do. Um, like I think my brain thinks that I'm a faster reader than I actually am. Um, so I was like, oh, I can totally finish this in one night and then I can start Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies on the drive home. But no, that didn't happen. Um, I read about 25 pages of this and then I got tired and I fell asleep. And then I finished it on the car ride home, but it was a nice little novella for the drive. So I was happy with it. Let me put this down. Yeah, so just like the other three books in the series, we're following our cleric Chi um, as they travel along, collect stories, uh, with their bird almost brilliant. I What I really enjoyed about this one is, now I can't really remember, I want to reread the first three, but from what I can remember, not a lot gets mentioned about the birds. There are these birds called Nixon, and they travel around with the clerics. Usually there's a bird and a cleric that get paired together and the birds travel with the clerics and they have really good memories and they remember like, everything they've ever heard. So then there's this big archive of all the stories that all the clerics ever collect. Um, and I really enjoyed in this one because we hear more about the birds. They're more a part of the story. So in this one, Cleric Chi goes back to the Singing Hills Abbey, back to their home and when they get there, there are these two royal mammoths guarding the gates. I actually really enjoyed in this one, it's like a story that's actually unfolding with Cleric Chi in real time, whereas all the other three um, follows the cleric, but also, but the main story is um, being told to Cleric Chi, whereas this one was more about uh, real-time events that were currently happening. I did really like it. I gave it four stars. I think my favorite in the series so far is uh, the second one, When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. I think the next one comes out in February, I want to say. Um, so I'm excited to pick that one up when it does come out. Yeah, so that's it. We're home now. Overall, I feel like it was a pretty successful reading. Um, I got a really good five-star memoir. I got a four and a half star speculative literary fiction and then a great continuation in a series that i really love um anyways i'm gonna go have a bath and um take some tylenol and ice my eye because it hurts okay goodbye i wanted to give you a black eye update because it looks pretty cool um i hope you are having a good new year so far and that nobody crashes into you on skis um okay have a good day see you soon